capture strap, or maybe even the harness that he told the incident commander that he has available so when he captures the dog. We know now the dog looks like it's in a little fray because it's, it's, it's very windy. A lot of downwash now is coming down from the helicopter. Uh, the firefighter will have to go over there and, and make sure that the animal, uh, you know, understands that he's there to help them because he doesn't want to get bitten or, or uh, hurt by the dog itself. It would be an innocent uh, reaction by the animal, I'm sure. But uh, once again, that, that's how the helitech will work, try to capture him if possible. But the helicopter might back off because he's got to be concerned about overhead op obstacles and things that might... Uh, interfere that operation. Yeah, you know, when you say hovering is one of the more dangerous parts of this rescue mission, obviously, because the dog keeps moving away, hovering is going to have to be a big part of this if they're going to try to reach him. It, it is, and, uh, you know, the, we, our pilots are some of the best pilots uh, anywhere. Uh, we've got a great team with the city and the county, and um, hovering, it is, a, it is a, a very tough, some of the, some of the folks that to fly for you right now will probably be nodding their head up and down and they do it all the time yeah in this picture they're they're hovering uh, at about five thousand to eight thousand feet maybe even more uh zooming in on this shot so um they they can relate to our helicopter pilot trying to keep this bird in position uh with uh, with the wind and the weather uh and obstacles clouds coming by that uh, basically almost blanked out your screen there for a long time yeah and, and I have not been able to ride on one of these helicopters during a rescue operation, but I have with the Coast Guard uh, in, in Alaska. And I can tell you that every, every eye on that helicopter is involved in the flight. Now, obviously, there's a, a, one pilot who's flying it, but the, 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 the folk, folks, the, the crew chief, everyone is involved in communicating throughout all of this. And it looks like we're about to try to effect a rescue here. Here comes a firefighter. He's making the move on the dog. I think uh, it looks like the dog is barking and maybe even trying to, trying to, to bite, bite the firefighter. And you can understand that the firefighter really hanging in there and doing a great job of wrestling that uh, rope or ring around the firefighter. What a job he's doing. Looks like he just gave a sign now to try to hoist them up, possibly. Right, he's got a capture strap amongst him. He's given the hand signals there when he's ready to the crew chief. He's got he's put him in a harness or a capture strap. Try to hold on to that dog to let him know that he, he's going to be okay. Sometimes with a human being, it's a lot easier. But, you know, this guy is very scared. He doesn't understand what his surroundings are. But I'm sure the firefighter is uh, telling, trying to comfort the dog and yeah. let him know that he's okay and he's going to be there hanging with him. He's going to take him, take him into a new dimension that he's never been in his life ever before. But uh, he'll yeah. probably be drunk here a little bit before the helicopter can get him up. And there he goes airborne now. It looks like we got a good capture now. All right. And now, and the danger is not over, we should say. You were talking about the danger of the hover. The, you know, the, one of the dangers in a situation like this is that somehow the pilot becomes distracted, gets too focused on the rescue itself, and, and isn't uh, flying the ship. And in this case, uh, we don't expect that to happen, but just to make the point that this is not over yet, and this, uh, this firefighter who's bringing the dog up, the, the entire team on that helicopter putting their lives at risk to save this dog uh, trapped in the L.A. River uh, in Vernon. We've been watching this rescue underway, and as uh, Captain Steve Bruder from L.A. City Fire has been telling us, it looks like we've got a good capture. They're now down onto to solid ground. Wow. What an amazing job by that rescue worker. A little hard landing there, but uh, they're down. And hopefully they'll have a lot of firefighters from the Swiftwater team uh, take control of the uh, the animal, find out who he belongs to, and uh, I think we'll change this dog's name to Lucky today. <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, what a wonderful end to this story. I mean, look at all the hard work that went into that rescue, and boy, what a payoff. It, it, you know, we're, we're, we're truly glad to do it. Uh, it's part of our job, like I said before. Uh, all life is important to us. Within every fire service, whatever community is watching Channel 5 today, firefighters have been putting it on the line all week, whether it be in swift water, helping sandbags, working with the city. Uh, the city family has tried to uh, come out in force to make sure that uh, people are safe, and that's for sure. Hey, uh, Steve, I want to make sure. Over at the later this afternoon to uh, do a play-by-play -play through the hands and the eyes of us. Uh, um, air operations LA City Fire. That is fantastic. And now they've got the dog and literally taken the dog into the paramedic unit uh, to, to make sure if it needs any uh, medical care, I guess. Uh, I don't know if
You guys don't have veterinarians who you, you travel around with, do you, Steve? We, we don't have any veterinarians, but uh, I'm sure what the biggest thing is, is uh, we're talking about the human beings and how to survive if you were in the water. Hypothermia and you're just, is the biggest uh, uh, problem that anybody will experience, including this dog. It's been in the cold water, it's expelled energy, and you just can't get your, your limbs moving. So what probably they're going to do is wrap that animal up in some blankets and get a little bit warmed and, and then uh, take it to uh, the closest animal shelter there from where they are and try to re reunite it with its owner. But uh, certainly we wouldn't take it to the hospital. We would take it working together with uh, the Animal Services Bureau within Animal Services, whether it be in Vernon or uh, I'm not even sure where they're located or where, what bridge they are. Are they still in Vernon? I'm not even sure. You know, we, we believe they still are in Vernon, but of course that dog traveled a ways on its own, so uh, we'll get confirmation on that. Now, what about the rescue workers? Because there were a lot of rescue workers here every day. And of course, we want to let our viewers know we're going to break off for just about 20 minutes. We'll be back at 1 o'clock with the KTLA News at 1. We'll give you a full, full recap of the amazing rescue in the L.A. River. The dog is safe. We'll bring that to you. And of course, we'll have all the latest with all the mudslides, with all the flooding, with all the rain that continues. We'll have that at 1